Hello Internet! Today I've got another quick tutorial for you on how to automate a mod using Applied Energistics. And the mod that we are going to be taking a look at today is Batania, specifically the automation of the creation of living wood and living rock using a pure daisy. Now you don't have to use the floating pure daisy, I'm just using it here uh, to hold this water in place but we will get to that here in just a second. So now obviously you're going to need to have your ME system set up and you're going to have need to have a good supply of both wood and stone in order to create the living wood and living rock and, and as well as any other raw materials that you are looking to create. Um, oh, the fox was in the way. <laughs> uh, and the way that we're going to be Doing this is through the use of the ME formation planes and the ME annihilation planes. These two guys right here, and you can check JEI to see exactly how you craft those. The way that these work is they are configured blocks, so you will configure each formation plane to what type of block you wish to have it place. And you want to make sure that this is set to block placement. If you click that, it'll change it to drop it as an item, which is not going to work for you. So you want that to make sure that stays on block placement. You can put acceleration cards into these, but they're really not necessary because of how long the pure daisy takes to transform the items. Now, the thing to keep in mind with the formation plane block is that it is a store, it is a passive storage block. It is not an active block the way that an export bus is. It works a lot more similar to a storage bus, meaning that if the item you are attempting to place is dropped into your system, it will place it through the formation plane, but it will not pull items out of a storage in order to place it. In order to accomplish that, we need to use an import bus. So as you can see, I've got my main ME network set up right here, and then I have a sub network set up across the top that is acting as the placer for all of the raw materials that I'm using. And right here, I have a configured export bus. I have it set with a capacity card to allow me to have two different items in it. And I have this set to round robin mode, which causes it to export a stone and then an oak and back and forth and it will do that for everything uh, however many items you have configured it will export one and then the next and then the next and then the next and then the next and so on all the way through and that helps keep the uh, reservoir here in your buffer a little bit more even now there's a couple of different ways you can build one of these buffers by far the easiest is to use a vanilla chest and as you can see I've got two stacks or a stack of each oak wood and stone stored in here and then I filled up the rest of this chest with stick. You can use any kind of blocking item that you want in here and you don't have to worry about your import bus pulling those sticks out as there's nowhere for them to go so they're not going to ever get pulled into your system. And as you can see, you just set the formation planes up and you can place these above or below or on either side. I just have them above because it's easier to see. And you make sure that they are in range of your pure daisy and it will steadily work on it. Now, in order to get the finished products away once these transform, you can see that it's very quickly sucking them up. We do that through the annihilation planes. Now the annihilation planes are not configured blocks. These have no configuration whatsoever to them. They will simply destroy any block that they're placed up against that they have a place to put. So as long as these have a storage where this will be accepted, they will, con they will pull out, they will break that item and place it into the ME network. There are several different ways you can go about creating a storage. You do not want this to just feed directly into your main ME network because you'll just create a feedback loop or it'll be pulling your oak wood out, it'll be putting it into your storage, and your oak wood will be pulled out of your storage and back in your buffer, and it'll just endlessly loop. So you are going to need to have some kind of finished storage buffer. I have an ME chest set up here, but you can also do this using a modded item like a small memory chest from Ender Utilities here. You can simply lock each slot to whatever it is that the final result is. You can also use a storage drawer storage 
in the drawer. You just need to make sure that you lock the drawer and then pre-configure each item that you want to have go in there. You can also use a vanilla chest. Uh, likewise, you will need to pre-configure the chest with the items that it is going to have in there and then place some blocking item into the rest of the chest. Uh, to max out, make sure that you only have one stack. If you only need one stack, if you want to have two stacks, then you would remove one of these and replace it with another living wood or living rock or snowball, whatever it is that you want to have multiple stacks of. The only downside to using a vanilla chest is whatever blocking item you are using, you need to make sh absolutely sure your ME system is not going to pull out at any point. Because if it takes one of these out, that system is just gonna immediately start trying to fill this with whatever it can get first. So in the case of this system here, it will probably try to break the oak wood and it will just start pulling oak wood in and it will fill that slot up with oak wood, which will just cause you problems. To get the items, or uh, to use the, if you wish to use the ME chest, what you're going to need to do is put some form of storage cell in here, and in order to make sure that the storage cell, make sure that the storage cell isn't going to be sucking up the oak wood, you're going to make use of a cell workbench. And these blocks do not need power. They just have this UI right here. You take your storage cell, place it right here, and then just like with the storage buses or export buses, you can configure what items that cell is to be, is to store. If there are already items on the storage cell that you want to have configured, you can click this button right here, and that will automatically partition it based on what's already in there. And then this one right here allows, if you want to have multiple storage cells, you can change that to copy mode, and that will leave the items, the configuration set up when you remove the storage cell. But you can just leave that off and place it right there. And then this goes into the front slot right like that. And then on the top, you can actually access the inventories. And then there it goes breaking the items now that it has a place to put them. If you use a storage chest, it does just directly connect to the ME ne network. You don't need a storage bus or any other anything else. Uh, the ME chest will consume a data channel and get power through the ME network. In order to connect the storage chest uh, that you choose to use, whether it's an ME chest or some other option, uh, to your main network without having it create a feedback loop, you will need to use a storage bus on the side, and these don't need to be configured at all. Connect that to your main ME network, and then you're, you will have full access to all the items that you need through your ME system. It's a pretty easy system to set up, and you can expand this. You could have an entire ring of just all eight oak, all eight wood. You could have all eight being stone. You could use some form of fluid or any other items that are available in your mod pack. Uh, JEI will give you information on the Pure Daisy if you were to look up on the Pure Daisy, if you then right click on it and click this tab right here, it will show you any valid recipes that your mod pack might have. Some of them have more, some of them have fewer. It all depends on what your mod designer is tending you to use it for. Likewise, if you wish to use fluid for it, it's the same basic setup, you just need to use the fluid formation plane in place of the regular formation plane, and this is configured using fluid in the same manner, then you will just need to have some source of fluid in your system. As you can see right here, I have a fluid import bus attached to a nuclear craft dense infinite water source, and that provides the water that is being turned into snow blocks, which then break into snow balls. Now, the important thing to keep in mind if you are using a fluid is that you do need to block it in somehow so that it doesn't spill all over the place. And if you are using the regular pure daisy rather than the floating pure daisy, a fluid source block next to it like this will cause that daisy to get knocked over as the water flows through it. So it's probably best to put the fluid on a corner and have it blocked in with something solid like glass or something else that isn't going to be affected by pure daisy. Anyway, that's it for today. I will 
Catch you in the next video. If you have any suggestions for other mods that you would like to see automated in this way, let me know in the comments down below. If this mod, if this video helps you out any, go ahead and make sure that you hit that like button there. If you want to see the rest of the videos that I have planned coming up here, you can get a little preview there in the background if you haven't watched those already. You make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get your name on one of my little fox friends here, let me know down in the comments what name you would like to have on there and what color ribbon you would like to see. But until then, I will see you in the next video, and happy Minecrafting.